Hello, I'm Maria Villalaris, and this is my reaction video for the Nobel Prize in Physics announcement in 2025. This year, the Physics Nobel Prize went to John Clark, Michel Devre, and John Martinez for their work on the discovery of macroscopic quantum mechanical tunneling and energy quantization in an electric circuit. In this video, I'm going to give a perspective on this from someone with a background in the fundamentals of quantum physics and working in quantum computing. So to introduce myself, I finished my PhD in the foundations of quantum information science last year and then started working in a quantum computing company, Oxford Quantum Circuits, doing research and science communication towards building superconducting quantum computers. And what's really exciting for me with the announcement of the Nobel Prize this year is that it really combines the two aspects of pushing the boundaries of the fundamental quantum science to its limits with relevance to questions that are still being discussed and debated today in the fundamentals of quantum physics, whilst also being the fundamentals that paved the way towards building superconducting quantum computers, which are at a really exciting stage today where we're entering this era of being able to get scale up the number of qubits and get the errors low enough to actually do useful quantum computations. So I'll start by giving a little summary of what these researchers found out. So the context of this Nobel Prize is that back in 1985, these three researchers, Clark, Devere and Martinez, all did a experiment together. John Clark was leading the group, Devere was a postdoc in the group, and John Martinez was a PhD student. And then they put out this paper together looking at measurements of macroscopic quantum tunneling in a Josephson junction. Let's break down a bit what this means. So it's using the peculiar properties of superconductors. Essentially, there were predictions done by another researcher who has his own Nobel Prize, Anthony Leggett, had predicted that the superconducting effects in a device called a Josephson junction, which is named after Brian Josephson, who also has a Nobel Prize. Um, Leggett predicted that this Josephson junction could be made to demonstrate quantum effects on a large scale. So let's understand what that means. What does quantum effects on a large scale mean in this context? I quite liked this figure from the Nobel Prize materials on this topic. So what you can see here is a figure depicting what's happening in the superconducting Josephson junction that these Nobel Prize winning experiments were done using. So this first image is showing a normal conductor, not a superconductor, where you have the electrons all kind of individually bumping about. And when a material is superconducting, what it means is that if you reduce its temperature below a certain temperature, then it starts to behave in a different way. It becomes superconducting and the mechanism behind this is that the electrons pair up and these are called Cooper pairs, which is what's demonstrated here in the picture. And then the material behaves in this superconducting way, which means that there's a current without any resistance to that current. So that's superconductivity. And this was then applied to build a device called the Josephson junction, where you have two superconducting parts with a gap in the middle, and then you put a thin insulating material in between that gap to make this Josephson junction, which has various interesting properties. One of them being that it was predicted to be able to demonstrate this interesting macroscopic quantum behavior. 
So that's what is being demonstrated in this third image. So what's being depicted here is that all of these Cooper pairs put into this Josephson junction can behave as though they are all part of a single particle. So they become essentially behaving the same way as one particle, even though in reality there are billions of these pairs of electrons. So in quantum mechanics, this means that they have a single wave function. So when you have lots of particles, we would normally describe them by individual wave functions of individual particles. But when they are all behaving as one particle, it's like they all have one single wave function in the way that a single particle would. And so essentially they behave as a artificial atom. This research led to superconducting qubits, as I'll discuss a bit more in a bit, but um, they, yeah, they behave as an artificial atom. To demonstrate that these billions of Cooper pairs actually behave as a single quantum particle, the researchers did a few experiments to show quantum effects that can only be explained if it's really behaving as a single particle. So one of these effects that they showed is quantum tunneling, which is an effect where you can have a particle and a barrier and the particle is able to get to the other side of the barrier even though if it was a classical particle it wouldn't have enough energy to to do that but because it's a quantum particle and it has a wave function that means that there is some part of the wave function that is in effect past the barrier and so there's some probability that the electron can jump across the barrier even though it wouldn't be able to if it just had that amount of energy classically and didn't have a wave function. So this tunneling is a uniquely quantum effect and the researchers demonstrated that it can work with this single quantum state. Another effect that they demonstrated was the quantization of energy levels, which means having separate energy levels in a similar way to how an atom will have jumps in energy levels. So these are the key quantum phenomena that the experimentalists demonstrated. They showed that you can really have this quantum effect even with billions of parts. Now, there are lots of different ways that you could understand the word macroscopic. So it's important to contrast this type of macroscopic quantum effect to situations where you are looking at an emergent effect from lots of individually quantum components. So the phenomenon of superconductivity, for example, just in itself, arises from the quantum properties of these individual Cooper pairs. But it's not a macroscopic quantum effect in the sense of all of them behaving as a single quantum object. It's just a emergent effect from these individually quantum components. The same happens with a laser. The way that it works is based on individual quantum properties of photons, but not from a entire whole behaving in a quantum way. Whereas in this case, all of these billions of Cooper pairs really are behaving together as a single quantum object. So it really is a macroscopic quantum phenomenon in that sense. So let's take a step back and think about the implications of these results. So I want to focus on two aspects, one being the microscopic aspect, the second being the quantization of energy levels. And these are gonna be relevant for foundations and for quantum tech. So the macroscopic aspect, 
Anthony Lager compared this macroscopic quantum effect to Schrodinger's cat because in the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment proposed by Erwin Schrodinger, there's the idea of putting a cat into superposition. Now Schrodinger was using this to demonstrate how absurd the consequences of quantum mechanics are to kind of show that there's something weird happening because surely cats can't be in quantum superpositions. And this thought experiment demonstrates the measurement problem, which is still being debated and discussed and generating new research today. And that's the question of would Schrodinger's cat actually go into a superposition? Or does the cat count as an observer and the cat actually observed the radioactive atom and caused it to collapse into just a single state? And one aspect of trying to solve this problem is to consider pushing the boundaries of putting a system into superposition to larger and larger macroscopic scales. So how does this relate to this Nobel Prize winning experiment? The researchers here demonstrated that all of these individual Cooper pairs, billions of them, can behave as a single quantum object. So it's possible to have a, to have this really quantum behavior happening collectively for a billion particles. And Anthony Leggett compared this to the Schrodinger's cat scenario because it's a similar situation in the sense of putting a really large number of individual systems in a quantum superposition. Now, it's not macroscopic at the scale of a cat and there have been further experiments and people are still doing experiments trying to really push the scale at which we can put objects into superpositions. I think there are researchers trying to put a virus in superposition that's around the, the state of the art. But at the time of this experiment in 1985, it was still kind of being discussed and debated whether these billions of Cooper pairs could actually behave as a single quantum object. So it's really cool that there was this step to showing that yes, quantum phenomena can apply at a macroscopic scale to billions of systems, even though it's not yet at the scale of a cat. It's definitely a big jump from what was possible before and what had been demonstrated before. So that's some of the quantum foundations side. Now, how about this other aspect of sharing the quantization of the energy levels? Well, this quantization of energy levels means that you can create an artificial atom and the subsequent experiments after this one that researchers did demonstrated that you can actually manipulate these energy levels to implement a quantum bit, a qubit, which is the fundamental building block of quantum computers, more generally of quantum information processing technologies. If you have a large number of these qubits with a low error rate, then you can run some computations much faster than you can on a classical computer, in some cases actually exponentially faster, and some of these computations you wouldn't be able to do with a classical computer, even if it was made of all the atoms in the universe. So it's a really significant difference and it makes computations possible that weren't possible at all ever before. There is currently a kind of global effort towards building quantum computers using lots of different underlying hardware platforms for example, trap tiles, neutral atoms. The one that's the most established today is to use superconducting qubits, which originated from this phenomenon. And that's the type of 
qubit that's used at Oxford Quantum Circuits, the company where I work. And I had fun writing this blog actually around roughly a year ago when I joined the company where it was kind of looking back at a bit of the origins of superconducting qubits within the broad theme of the flexibility of superconducting qubits because it's there's kind of a whole periodic table of superconducting qubits you can manipulate them in loads of different ways to have loads of different properties and I found this mention here about the key idea leading to superconducting qubits being that they can exhibit quantum states on the macro scale and sustain macroscopic quantum states. So this is really referring to this exact Nobel Prize winning experiment. And that then led to further amazing experiments where actual superconducting qubits were built and then further experiments where actually really interesting superconducting qubits were built um, with better and better properties. And that's what industry is doing today, is creating even more kind of novel and interesting qubits building up on those developments. To kind of summarise what my take really is on the Nobel Prize, what my reaction was, my first reaction was actually, wow, another Nobel Prize for quantum? And that's because a few years ago, back in 2022, there was the Nobel Prize awarded again to quantum, and that was for the Bell inequality experiments. Again, it's this great fusion of foundational quantum ideas and ideas that underpin the quantum technology that we have today. It was a big deal. I think the quantum community is surprised and happy to have another quantum Nobel Prize awarded in recent years. And I'm happy to have seen lots of social media posts from people that have worked with these researchers saying lots of positive things. Martinez and Devere have both been working in quantum computing in recent years, so that's kind of cool to see what the origins of that were in the past with this kind of fundamental quantum research. And now they're working on making the, the technology a useful reality. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what your reactions are to the Nobel Prize. And if you want to see more quantum videos, quantum news updates, uh, then let me know. See you next time.